What's up guys, it's Matt. In this video, I wanted to talk about probability and sample sizes in trading and why understanding probability is so important as a trader. So I'll be answering a bunch of different questions with different types of examples. So if at any point in time you find this video helpful and you enjoy it, please drop a like and subscribe to this channel. So when we think of the term probability, there's a lot of different things that might come to our mind. So some common examples are rolling a die or multiple dice, flipping a coin, or maybe choosing a card out of an entire deck of cards. So if we start off with the first example, let's say that you're rolling a die. Well, a single die is made up of six different numbers that range from one to six. So you know that if you, for instance, want to land a three, well, then you have a one out of six chance of, of getting a three. And then if we move on to flipping a coin, so let's say you flip a coin and you have either heads or tails. Well, you only have two different options. So you know that you basically have a 50% chance of either landing on heads or landing on tails. And then if we move on to choosing a card out of an entire deck of cards, well, we know that a deck of cards is made up of 52 different cards. So there's four different suits, and this might range from an ace all the way up to a king, and you have uh, different numbers from two to 10. But basically, if you were to choose a random card, well then you know that you have a one out of 52 chance of being right and choosing the right card. So these are some common examples of how probability plays into the real world. So now, how does the law of probability apply to trading? Well, let's think of an example. Let's say that there's a trader and they took 10 different trades. And let's say that they started off with a loss, followed by a win, followed by six losses in a row, and then they finished with two wins. So if we do the math, then we can see that if we add up the wins, they had three wins in total, they had seven losses in total. And so if we calculate this out of 10 trades, then they only won three out of the 10 trades. So they had a winning percentage 30%. And to also keep this simple, let's say that they had a risk to reward ratio of a one to one, meaning that their wins were equal to their losses. Well, then if the average person were to look at this, then they would assume that since this person only had a 30% winning percentage and their risk to reward ratio is a one to one, and they had more losses than wins, then they're technically a bad trader, right? Well, here's the thing, right? Let's take this one step further and let's say that this trader actually has a long-term winning percentage of 70%, which actually does not make him a bad trader because it means that he is profitable over the long period of time, excluding taxes and all that fun stuff. But basically, a lot of people might look at this shocked and think to themselves, well, how can he have a 70% winning percentage if he only won 30% of their trades here. So this all basically ties into sample sizes. So if we think back to the previous examples of where I asked you to roll a die or flip a coin or to pick a random card out of an entire deck of cards, we knew that there was a certain probable outcome based on probability that maybe the odds would be in our favor. So in this case, let's say that I asked you to uh, choose the number three before rolling a die, you know that there's basically a one sixth chance that you would roll a three, but this doesn't automatically guarantee that you're going to roll a three if you roll a die, let's say six times in a row. So if I asked you to roll a die six times in a row, you might have an out outcome where you start off with a four, followed by another four, followed by a five, followed by a one and a two and another two. So in this, this instance, we rolled a die six times in a row, but we never ended up getting a three, but this still agrees with the mathematical uh, law of probability, because after each roll, we had a one out of six chance of getting a three, but we simply did not get it due to the fact that this sample size was pretty small, meaning that we only rolled a die six times in a row but let's say that instead of ro rolling it six times, we decided to roll it 600 times or 6 million times. Well, 
In this case, eventually we would get to the point of where not only would we get a three, but we would actually get the ones, the twos, and all the other numbers up to six. We would probably get a pretty even number uh, of rolls between all six of them over the long period of time. And that's because if you have a much greater sample size, well then your odds are more in your favor. And when it comes to sample sizes, the smaller the sample size, the more randomness should be expected when it comes to a certain probable event. So what I mean is that, again, if we look back to where we decided to roll a die, a die six times in a row, these numbers were pretty random. But if we had to do it a million times or a billion times, well then these numbers will become less random. And so now if we think of the second example of where we have to flip a coin, we know that if we only have to flip a coin five or ten times in a row, so let's say we flip it five times in a row, we might have a completely random outcome of where we land on, on heads five times in a row. And this would agree, and this would completely agree with this uh, law of probability that you had a 50% chance, but due to the fact that you only did it five times in a row and you have a small sample size, this is going to be more random, right? But if we decide to now flip a coin a billion times in a row, well then the amount of heads compared to the amount of tails is going to be less random. So over a billion flips, we can assume that the amount of heads and tails that are flipped will be pretty even. And so now if we think back to the trader that ended up taking 10 trades and the only one three out of their 10 trades after having an unfortunate losing streak of six losses in a row, let's say that they never quit trading and they can continue trading. And let's say they continued um, and they took another 40 trades. So in this case, let's say that this sample size, again, they won three, they, they lost seven trades, so they won three out of 10. But for this next sample size of 10 trades, we can see how they only had three losses, but now they had seven wins. So they won seven out of 10. And for this sample size over here, they had five wins, but five losses. So they had a 50% winning percentage in this sample size. And then this next sample size, they had a pretty good winning streak at one point where they encountered seven wins in a row. So here they finished with eight out of 10 wins. So this sample size would represent an 80% winning percentage. And lastly, over here, we can see that they won another seven out of 10 trades. So we can see how despite having an unfortunate sample size of 30%, the next one was 70% for their winning percentage, then a 50%, then 80%, and then 70%. And we can see how all of the wins and the losses were quite random, where sometimes they might've encountered multiple losses in a row, other times they would have encountered multiple wins in a row. And so this was completely random and it was even more random in the beginning when their sample size was smaller, but as their sample size grew, so if we do the math over here, right, they had 10 wins, then 15, then they had 23, then 30. So now their winning percentage is 30 out of 50, which is basically 60%. So remember how they started off with 30%? Well now, after taking more trades and more trades, now their winning percentage is 60%, which is much closer to their long-term uh, winning percentage, which I mentioned earlier, was 70%. So we can see how it was quite random in the beginning, where it wasn't even close to 70%, but now that they've taken more trades, closer to 70% because the, sam the sample size has gotten bigger. This means that we can't predict ahead of time whether or not we'll experience a losing streak or when we'll experience a winning streak. So it works both ways. And the reason why all of this is important is that because first of all, some traders might not know that when it comes to trading, probability will play a big role in the world of trading. So some traders might start off and they'll do a bunch of back testing in order to find a certain trading strategy and they'll back test it and see that it wins 70% of the time. But then when they start trading, 
uh, in this case, like let's use this example like we just did. Let's say that they start trading and after encountering a loss followed by a win, they encounter six losses in a row. So after experiencing, and it doesn't have to be six losses, it could even be two or three or four losses, depending of course on how much they decide to risk. So let's say that they were risking too much and they were over leveraging. Well, after encountering six losses, they might have blown their account or they might have gave up on their trading strategy altogether. And so the issue here isn't the fact that the trading strategy wasn't working, but it's simply the fact that they didn't they didn't let the laws of probability play out or over a long period of time. So had they been had they have been patient and controlled their emotions and continue trading, well then you never know if the next couple of trades end up uh, being in your favor. So the next couple of trades could have been a winning streak. And so this is why it's important to pay attention to the sample sizes. And so one chart that I want to show you guys that I've previously discussed in a video briefly, but I just want to bring this up again. Uh, in this chart, you can see the probability of encountering a certain amount of consecutive losses. Now, this is very important to understand because this ties into trading and probability. And that's because if you do have a certain winning percentage, so let's say you have a trader that has a winning percentage of 70%, like the previous trader that we uh, were looking at. Well, we can see that despite having a winning percentage of 70%, you still have a 37%, 37% chance of encountering four losses in a row at any given period of time. And even looking further, you had a 4% chance of encountering six losses in a row. So the trader that we we're just looking at that encountered six losses in a row, they had a 4% chance of, of encountering this situation and they simply encounter this situation. Now, as your winning percentage goes up, so as it goes up from 70 to 80, and let's say to 90%, well, then you obviously don't have to worry as much about encountering a certain losing streak, but even having something like four losses in a row, there's still a 5% chance of this happening despite the fact that you're winning 90% of your trades. And obviously, if you go down on the list, so someone who has a 40% winning percentage, and let's say this is a trader that decided to sacrifice their winning percentage in order to have a greater risk to reward ratio, which some traders like to do. So maybe they have a risk to reward ratio of a one to three or a one to four, which is pretty good. But they have to keep in mind that if we look at this entire list, we can see that even encountering something like six losses in a row happens 93% of the time. And even encountering nine losses in a row happens 41% of the time. So if you're only taking 10 trades and you're relying on a small sample size, well then if you do encounter a losing streak, this might entirely deter your trading plan and you might give up entirely or you might uh, decide to change some things around despite the fact that if you look at it mathematically wise nothing is incorrect it's simply due to the fact that your sample size is not large enough therefore your uh, winning percentage isn't at its truest form so hopefully you guys found this video helpful if you did please drop a like and be sure to check out my trading community the link is in the description to the discord app or the telegram app and it's open to all sorts of traders so you can be a beginner trader or an advanced trader thanks for watching i'll see you in the next one